Hello, I'm Rita Dove, and I'm going to be reading to you uh, two scenes from my play, The Darker Face of the Earth. This play is set on a slave plantation in South Carolina, and the two characters in these two scenes are both slaves. Augustus is a mixed-race slave. He's just recently been bought and brought to the Jennings Plantation. He is educated. He is proud. He is not going to take anything from anybody. The other character is Phoebe. She's a young woman slave on the plantation. And in the first scene, they have just met. And in the second scene is a few weeks later when an insurrection is about to take place. Phoebe, ain't you ever scared? Augustus, of what? White folks? They're more afraid of me. Pain? Every whipping's got to come to an end. Phoebe, I heard you've been whipped so many times they lost count. Augustus, they think they can beat me to my senses. Then they look into my eyes and see I'm not afraid. Phoebe, it'd be something not to be afraid. Augustus, you have to have a purpose, something bigger than anything they can do to you. Phoebe, and ain't nobody ever tried to kill you? Augustus, oh yes. First time I was hardly alive. They ripped me from my mother the night I was born and threw me out like trash. I didn't walk until I was three. Phoebe, Lord have mercy. Augustus, mercy had nothing to do with it. Missy couldn't stand the sight of me. Just look at me. It's an old story. And the second scene. Augustus, the first time I saw you, I thought to myself, that's not the spirit of a slave. That's a pure flame. Phoebe, go on. Augustus, tell me, how did you land on the Jennings Plantation? Phoebe, I didn't land at all. I was born here. Augustus, so this is your home. Phoebe, much as any of us got home on this earth. Augustus, and your folks? Phoebe, my father was sold before I was born. Mama, it's a long story. Augustus, I got time. Phoebe, Mama worked in the kitchen until I was about five. That's when fever broke out in the quarters. She used to set table scraps out for the field hands, and I stuck wildflowers in the baskets to pretty them up. Mama said, you never know what a flower can mean to someone in misery. That fever tore through the cabins like wildfire. Massa Jennings said the field hands spread contamination and forbid them to come up to the house, but Mama couldn't stand watching them just wasting away, so she started sneaking food to the quarters at night. Then the fever caught her, too. She couldn't hide it long, and Massa Jennings found out. Mama started wailing right there at the stove. Hadn't she been a good servant who, st who stayed up three nights straight to keep Massa's baby girl among the living when her own mother done left this world? Who did he call when the fire needed lighting? Who mended the pinafores Miss Amalia was forever snagging on bushes? Mama dropped to her knees and stretched out her arms along the floor. She didn't have nowheres to go. She'd always been at the big house. Where am I going to lay my poor sick head, she asked. He stood there, staring like she was a rut in the road, and he was trying to figure out how to get around it. Then he straightened his waistcoat and said, 
You have put me and my child in the path of mortal danger, and you dare ask me what to do with your nappy black head? He didn't even look at her. Just spoke off into the air like she was already a ghost. She died soon after. Augustus. Lord have mercy. Phoebe. Mercy had nothing to do with it. Ain't that what you said?